Hey there, it's Dahlia of Galactic Hunter alone. What? Antoine's in Japan right now, uh, meeting up with fun people doing cool stuff without me. But I do have the pleasure of unboxing the Seastar S50, which is very, very exciting. So rather than just talk about it, let's get to it. In this video, I'm also going to review the sea star and image nebulae planets, the moon, and the sun from the backyard and see what results that I get. Uh, let's quickly start with the unboxing! So here we have the sea star in its box. Ta da! Ta da da! The sea star! Whoa! Oh! <gasps> Open up the case! Wow! This is cool. Why do I feel like I've seen this before? <laughs> this is just like another unboxing we just did. I'm gonna attempt to take this out really like gently because I am by myself. Uh, the tripod, we'll take that out first. It's a nice lightweight uh, carbon fiber tripod. Uh, love to see that. It's got a bubble level on it. So that's really good to have. Uh, we've kind of seen this with other smart telescopes that we've had uh, in our mitts before. In here we also have, it looks like, cables, probably the cables to charge the Sea Star. Uh, ooh, we have a filter. I've seen a lot of people uh, using the Sea Star with a solar filter, which is honestly really, really cool. I love that smart telescopes have um, solar observation options. So this is all instructions which nobody reads. Uh, we lovingly toss those aside. Oh, they have some with images. They have some instructions with images. Ooh. I think I'm gonna play with this tonight. Cause the Antoine's not here. But for the piece de resistance, piece de resistance, we take out the actual uh, smart telescope itself. So here I have it on its side. Um, I'm gonna turn it around here so you can see it, the sea star itself. We can see the logo there. It's got some little, um, rubber things on the bottom to place it gently on here, which is actually pretty amazing because I always am so fearful of putting things down because I feel like they're gonna roll away. But in this case, they already thought about that. So love to see it. Really, I think that's what it came in the box. Quite, quite simple, really. So here, I'm just gonna lay this out uh, in just a second for what you see in the box. So there you have it. That's all that comes in the box with the Seastar S50. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I'm really hoping to take it out for a spin tonight. It's uh, been clear nights the past couple days, so I don't know, we'll see what I can get. Before you go and put the Seastar outside, you wanna be sure that you charge it first. So during the day, be sure that you get the charger and you plug it in, it's really cool, it's like on the side and you be sure that you charge it before you go outside. It does have a six hour battery life, so you're sure to be just fine as long as you charge your battery. So I set up the scope in the backyard, but I realized that the bubble level was hidden between the tripod base and the telescope, but that's not really an issue, which you'll see in a second. Well, I literally have to be down here, um, crocodile hunter s style. As you can see, it is very small. It is not very complicated and it really doesn't have many parts on it. Sea Star is a triplet apochromatic telescope and uses the Sony IMX 462 CMOS sensor, which has a resolution of 2 megapixels. The Sea Star has a 50 millimeter aperture and a focal length of 250 millimeters and a focal ratio of f5. Also built into the Sea Star is an electronic focuser, a dew heater, and a filter wheel. Wow. The dual band filter, which is a 20 nanometer for HA and a 30 nanometer for O3, acts as a light pollution filter and is built right in to the Sea Star. On top of that, a dark filter is also built into the Sea Star for calibration purposes. Neat. Sea Star weighs 5.5 pounds, making it one of the lightest smart telescopes available, and its dimensions are 10.1 by 5.6 by 5.1 inches. What you do see here on the side is the charging port and the on button, which I will press now because it takes a moment to start up. We'll just let that go off. And it also has an arm that opens up and extends to the sky, much like other smart telescopes that we've seen before. So, um, and I heard this one actually talks to us. So I'm very excited to see, or hear it talk to me. 
And then the last thing that... Ready to connect. Ready to connect. So last thing that we'll do is connect to it with our app. And if you don't have the C-Star app already downloaded, you better do that now because there's no way you're going to connect to it without it. So let's go inside. C-Star for DSO. I had some issues connecting to it, but the trick is to be on airplane mode, which made it a lot easier. So from the app, you can use the digital bubble level to level your tripod until it's green, which is pretty awesome. Then you'll go into the sky atlas and look for any target. I chose the crescent nebula and I slewed over to it. And it's gonna plate solve and auto center itself. After that, you can go into the stargazing window and start imaging. Before you do though, you can decide to activate or deactivate the light pollution filter, which is built in, and that's also pretty cool. And here's what I got, which looks awesome. I imaged a few other deep sky objects, my favorite being the Orion Nebula, of course, and the Horsehead Nebula. And I also got to the Pac-Man Nebula, which turned out pretty cool, and this is what it looks like right out of the app. And here is Antoine taking a look at the master file on PixInsight. So here we can see what the Pac-Man Nebula is going to look like once stretched. And uh, yeah, it looks really nice. And the only issue I see is on the corners. There is some uh, really bad uh, noise there, so we can just crop this out. And uh, I've checked other images and I've noticed that this issue is um, pretty constant. I'm guessing it's because of the light pollution. I'm not really sure. But yeah, we're gonna have to crop this out. So this is overall what I was able to get, um, but I'm going to try Bill's tools for the narrowband uh, switch here, and let's see if we can uh, like it better. So this would be in more like blue and orange. I think I like this one more than the red one, but I will export both and uh, you tell me. Sea star for planetary. Smart telescopes, including the Sea star are not built for planetary imaging, so don't expect to get nice shots of the planets with it. Here we have Jupiter. The planet is completely overblown and has no detail, but you can see some of the moons, which admittedly is cool. Sea star for Lunar. Lunar photography with the Sea star is okay. Don't expect close-up views of the craters, but you can expect to get something similar to what you'd see when you use a DSLR camera and a telephoto lens. Overall, not bad. Sea Star for Solar. The Sea Star comes with a free solar filter, which is super cool and really nice of ZWO to include. To image the sun, just go into solar mode and follow the directions. The sun looks great with the sea star, and that might be one of the easiest ways to capture the eclipse next year. And guys, it's a total solar eclipse! Ah! So, to conclude... Wait, so what did I miss? <laughs> uh, well, you're probably at the best oh, part. Oh, nice, yes. You're here at the pros and cons. Okay, so what did you like about this? Tell me like three things. So Sea Star, on top of being like, oh, it's it's so crazy how light it is. Like it, is it really, crazy light. it really is so crazy light. Um, on top of that, it is easy to use. So that's also a really good attribute. Um, it also has a built-in filter, so you don't have to worry about like putting things on and off. That's really nice. And um, kind of a con, but you know, it has a bubble level kind of here where you can't see it. However, it uh, it does have a built-in one that you can use on the app, so you can kind of like figure out whether it's level or not there. So that's really cool. That's also a really nice thing to have. You don't have to worry about it. And, and what are three things you didn't like? So of course there's always gonna be the thing with smart telescopes, right? Yes, they are easy to use, but they don't really replace the quality that you get from a regular rig. Um, and you know, although we like how, e how easy to use it is, it's just not gonna beat it. Uh, another thing is that the built-in uh, the built-in filter kind of has halos, which is also not fun because when you're looking at a bright star, it produces halos. So that's not a fun thing to have. Very hard to process out. And I had one more thing. Um, planetary, yes. So yeah, uh, smart telescopes just in general, not just sea star, are not very good at planetary. It just is what it is. But you know, it was still fun to see that little blob there. <laughs>
And also for the app, uh, I had time to look at the app. It's really nice, very simple to use, and uh, I think it can really get better over time. So the app overall is great. Um, yeah, that's Yeah, great. and that's it. You know, you stuck around here just for the pros and cons, and there you have it. So uh, that's all that we have. I we really hope that you enjoyed this video about the sea star. Wah! I also have a surprise. I didn't know that ZWO sold cats. Hi, Chester. He really is the troublemaker of this bunch. Bye.